Before you get started, you might want to double check that you're solid on Newton's laws of motion and drawing free body diagrams. I have videos in the description for both of those content areas, as well as links to my strategy steps and equation sheets. Now let's try an example problem. What is the greatest rate of acceleration a car can attain on a horizontal road with a coefficient of static friction of 0.6? Step 1 would be to identify the question, and you know you're done with step 1 when you have a symbol with a question mark. Step 2 is to draw a picture, so take a moment and draw a picture of an El Camino on the road. And when you're done, step 3 is to sketch a free body diagram. Okay, let's start our free body diagram with a dot that represents the body. And then we're going to look for our three hints, invisible forces, contact points, and we're going to consider acceleration. There's going to be invisible gravity down. And then we're going to look for contact points on the car. It looks like the ground has a supportive force up, so we're going to have a normal force. And if there's no acceleration vertically, there shouldn't be... Um, a winning direction up or down, so those two forces have to be equal. And then the ground is also providing frictional force to resist the tires sliding. So that frictional force should be forward. Okay, now step four is to analyze the free body diagram to create our own equations. So we consider that the acceleration was forward, which means there should be net force of zero in the vertical direction, so I'm able to say that normal force is equal to mg. I can also see that if I add up the sum of all of these forces, the net force is going to be static friction. So I can make another equation that says net force equals static friction, and that's the end of step four. Step five is to add relevant equations that are always true. In this case, I've got friction, so we should add our friction equation, F equals mu n, that's going to be relevant. And I also have a net force equation, so we should add the equation for Newton's second law, F net equals ma. And now I have a list of four equations to help me solve for our question for acceleration. Step six is to solve for the unknown. In this case, we're going to look for an equation that has acceleration in it. Oh, there it is, Newton's second law. We'll start with you. F equals ma. We can just rewrite this equation for a, and then we get a equals f net divided by mass. Now, if we had both of those terms, then we'd be all set, but we don't, so we're going to have to substitute. F net, we have another equation over here that uh, says it's equal to static friction. So we can substitute static friction in there. Now, if we knew the amount of static friction, we might be done, but we don't. So we're going to have to substitute that too. We've got an equation over here for friction, so we can substitute mu times normal force in for friction. We do have mu, it's 0.6, so we can keep that but we don't know the normal force. We're going to have to substitute. Oh look, normal force is mg. Let's put that in there. Okay, and it looks like m's cancel out and we get an acceleration of 6 meters per second squared. Next question. Let's consider how rapidly one could accelerate down an incline with no friction. Step one is to read and understand the question. In this case, they are once again asking for acceleration, so we know we're done when we have a symbol with a question mark. Step two is to draw a picture, so go ahead and draw a picture of a skier going down a slope. Step three is to draw a free body diagram, so we start with a dot to represent the body, and then we're going to consider invisible forces, such as gravity, we're going to consider contact points, such as the surface of the incline. Normal force is always drawn perpendicular to a surface, so in this case, normal force and gravity are not collinear. 
And my third hint is to consider acceleration. We know that acceleration is going to be downhill, which means there's going to be no acceleration in the perpendicular direction. So that means normal force is going to cancel out with the component of gravity that's perpendicular to the hill. And this brings us to step four. In step four, we analyze the free body diagram to create equations. Well, if normal force is equal to the component of gravity through the ramp, then I can make the equation normal equals mg cosine theta. From here, we can use vector summation to find there's a leftover net force component down the ramp, mg sine theta. So we can say f net equals mg sine theta. The next thing we're going to do is step five, where we apply laws and formulas. We're going to look at our equation sheet and try to find equations that are always true that are related. Notice we were asked about acceleration, and we have a net force equation, so it would be applicable to use Newton's second law, F net equals m times a. Since we're looking for a, we can rewrite the net force equation starting with a equals F net divided by m. Now we have a formula for net force equal to mg sine theta, so we can substitute. And then, of course, the m's are going to cancel out, so acceleration is just going to be g sine theta, which ends up being 5 meters per second squared. Here we have a block on a ramp that we have to figure out the coefficient of friction necessary to keep it from sliding. So mu static equals question mark for step one. Uh, step two is a picture. Step three, FBD, uh, we have invisible gravity down. We're going to have normal force perpendicular to the surface, and we're going to need a frictional force uphill. Step four is to analyze the free body diagram. So let's consider the direction of perpendicular to the ramp. We should have no acceleration, and therefore any forces along that direction cancel out. So n equals mg cosine theta. Now let's look at uphill and downhill. Downhill we have mg sine theta, and uphill we have static friction, so those two have to be equal. And now we're ready to apply laws that are always true. So we're going to look for things that are related. So we've got friction and normal, oh there we are. We've got an equation that has friction and normal, f equals mu n. And remember we are solving for mu, so we're going to set mu equal to friction divided by normal and substitute for those things. And it looks like mg's are going to cancel, which leaves us with sine divided by cosine, which is just tangent theta. So mu equals tangent of 30, which is 0.57. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Mr. H Physics. Good luck on your problem solving.